We all know that big tech is the big influencer and we know how much this impacts our lives and we've seen this grow as the companies have grown over the last few years. And you see that some of these companies have gotten very protective of their systems. And what they want to do is hide behind what is called Section 230 and use those protections that kind of give them a safe harbor away from the content that is placed on their sites and allows them to do these things like community rules. And we know how that is turning out. In Section 230, users are responsible for what they post, which means that you're responsible for what you post, which of course, that is reasonable. And platforms have the right to set their own content guidelines within limits without being sued. Well, now that sounds reasonable also. And in the days when the internet was in its infancy, it was, it was reasonable. But you only have to look back a few years to see how big tech started to feel like they could kind of hide between behind this and then they could manipulate the rules to accommodate their own bias and as the internet has grown and as the social media platforms have grown we have seen the impact of that bias some of you may remember that in 2016 producers of the christian film i'm not ashamed had to fight the content moderators at YouTube to keep the film's trailer running online. Now in Tennessee, in Nashville, we have the members that are of the Christian music industry, the singers and the musicians and songwriters, and also the music and movie producers. And it seems that every single week, there is someone from this community that is having to fight to keep their music or their creative content online. What are the tech companies using to shut this down? Community standards. Saying that something doesn't meet their standards. And I've even been a victim of the censorship that comes from big tech and of their irresponsible and unfair content management standards that they are imposing on thousands of creators, thousands of conservative activists, and even law enforcement officials who are just trying to do their job, that job of keeping all of us safe. Now, you might be asking, and you might be a little bit frustrated thinking, what are we doing to push back on this and to fight against this? Well, as far as Section 230 is concerned, things really started to come to a head in 2017 when Congress and the Trump administration sent a very strong message to Silicon Valley that no one is too big to regulate. Through legislation, we have fought back and we started fighting back against online sex traffickers. And as chairman of the Comms and Tech Subcommittee at Energy and Commerce, I held hearings, brought people in that were fighting this online sex trafficking and held big tech accountable for systemic bias that was standing in between the American people and a free and open internet. In 2018, we won an important battle against traffickers and the platforms that shield them and the passage of the Allow States and Victims to Fight Online Sex Trafficking Act. We continued that fight this year with the introduction of the Earn It Act, which would hold tech companies accountable for their policing of the platforms and for protecting children from sexual exploitation. 
Last year was a big year for online free speech advocacy. In the Senate Judiciary Committee, we held a major hearing examining how tech platforms censor speech that they disagree with. We know that these content managers and these reviewers are bringing their bias to work with them and are applying it online to your post and your free speech. A few months later, I met with the other members of the Commerce Committee to discuss ways big tech can fight extremism online without resorting to bias and censorship tactics. This year, efforts to reform Section 230 and protect speech online are in full swing. Now, there's no denying that conservatives have suffered under liberal mob rule. But right now, we're looking for ways to reform Section 230 and to regulate big tech without turning the U.S. Congress into a new speech police. After all, we know for a fact that big tech's biases are a problem, but when did more government become the solution? The answer to that is more government is generally not the solution. What we do know though, is big tech's era of self-regulation has come to an end, but a one size fits all standard is not going to be the solution. Instead, we're going to give big tech some guide rails that will encourage innovation while also making it abundantly clear that Congress will not tolerate carelessness and bias that puts speech and safety at risk. I look forward to working with my colleagues on the technology task force at the Judiciary Committee that I am leading and in the Commerce Committee on these issues. To receive updates on this work and to hear more, go to my website, blackburn.senate.gov and sign up for our newsletter that we send out every single Friday. Thank you so much.